Hey guys, we've been getting a lot of questions on what type of vlogging equipment we use as well as questions about how to get started vlogging. So I decided to put a video together showing all of our equipment as well as a few tips for getting started. thing that I want to mention is um, if you're going to get started, do it because you're passionate about doing it and you want to either show your love of something um, or you want to capture memories of your trips or whatever you're doing with your family, that kind of thing. Don't do it um, to make money or get subscribers or because of the numbers because you will, there's nothing wrong with doing it for those reasons, but you'll get frustrated. It's, I would say for most people, unless you're one of the lucky few, um, it's very slow growing as far as numbers. Um, and I think there's a big misconception about people on YouTube making lots of money. Um, don't get me wrong, there's people with millions of subscribers that do make good money. But for, I think, the average vlogger uh, with modest numbers, um, you don't even make enough money to cover expenses for your equipment, much less trips and stuff. Um, so I would just say go into it because you really want to do it and it's fun for you. Um, for us, we love sharing our love of theme parks, um, our travel, you know, not just theme parks, but other travel. And then this year we've actually started sharing our weekly lives as well. And we just enjoy it. We enjoy the interaction with you guys. Uh, we enjoy going back and watching our videos that are from previous years and all the fun memories that we had while we were on these trips. Um, and that's what keeps us going. And then I personally really enjoy the whole process of editing the video and the creativity involved. Um, you know, choosing whether to speed something up, whether to put music behind it, um, you know, whether to put, you know, counts of things I keep saying over and over again because it's funny. Just, just the creative process for me is a lot of fun, so it's truly something I enjoy doing. And in all honesty, if I stopped enjoying it, which I don't ever see happening, but if I did, I don't think I would do it anymore because um, this is not a job for me. This is something that I'm passionate about and that I enjoy. So um, that would be my advice. So let's say that you already know that you want to do it because you enjoy it. Um, you, you want to film your family memories and preserve them, whatever the reason. Um, how do you get started? Um, I'm not going to go through the logistics on YouTube because Google has put together extensive help on how to set up your you know, YouTube site. Um, the thing I did want to talk about though is sort of what equipment should I start with? My personal opinion, other people may disagree, is don't start with a super expensive camera. Now, I did not start filming with my smartphone, but that's what a lot of people do. What I would say is be sure you hold it landscape when you film. <laughs> don't hold it uh, portrait. Um, portrait gives you those really skinny, if you've ever seen a vlog and it's very skinny, um, that's from holding your phone portrait. So just be sure you turn it landscape. But there's nothing wrong, especially if you have a newer phone, with filming with a phone. Um, I did not do it because at the time we started vlogging in 2014, I did not have a very good smartphone. It was fine for a phone, but it didn't have very good video. Um, so that's why I did not start with a phone. Otherwise, I'd highly recommend that because you can get um, even holders to put the phone in to make it easier to vlog with. And most of them have pretty decent sound and pretty decent video. So. I think that's a great place to start. That way you pretty much have no investment if you've already got a smartphone. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is if you don't want to use your phone or you want something that has a little more flexibility than a phone is get a action oriented camera. So I'm gonna start with this one. This is a Sony action cam. I know most people have GoPros. At the time that we bought this, we compared this to the GoPro and at that time, it had better stabilization and a few more bells and whistles that the GoPro didn't have. Since that time, the GoPro has come out with many, many, many new versions. So it may have far exceeded this. So do your own research and pick the best one for you. 
Also, I'd say the GoPro is more readily available and probably has more accessories because it's just become so widely used in the last three years since we bought this. This was actually our first vlogging camera. So it's in a case. The case allows you to attach either a tripod or a grip or something in between. Um, or this, this is a clip-on mount. And you put that in there and clip it onto something. So you've got lots of options and there's a lot of other mounts. There's so many mounts. And these action cameras work really well in action scenarios. So they're, they have very good stabilization. You know, people use these mountain biking, skiing, you know, for all kinds of action shots. So you can imagine they work well on rides at theme parks or other action oriented things. Um, even if you're not doing a theme park vlog, it's still, I think, very versatile. And so I'm gonna show you how small it is. This outer case comes with it, and that allows you to put it on a tripod, but the actual camera is this tiny. It's so small. It's smaller than my hand, and my hand's not terribly big. So I'm going to put it back in the case and show you how I typically used it. So that's how easy it is to snap the case back on. I know I probably had it below the level that you could see, but it's super easy. You just screw in the grip and you're ready to go. And I'm a big fan of these foam grips. You can get these on Amazon, they're very cheap. This particular model I don't think is available anymore, but they have ones like it. So it's, it's a foam grip, so it's very soft, very lightweight, very easy to hold. And these are allowed in theme parks as of today. Um, I've never had a problem getting these in. Sometimes they ask me if it extends, and as long as you say no, you're good to go. They, they do not allow selfie sticks at Disney World and some other theme parks, so keep that in mind. So the, what the grip does for you on these action cams, in this one in particular, it's absolutely required because you will have noise from your hand touching the camera. So it gets rid of that rattling noise. Then also it allows you to turn it back and forth. So I can talk into the camera or I can turn it this way. Another advantage that I think is great for beginners and, and also for myself, depending on the situation, this has a wide angle lens built in. It's a fisheye lens that does cause some curvature around the edge of the film. And it does record in 1080 um, with, um, yeah, 1080p. But what I will say is, you, as you notice, there's no viewfinder. There's advantages and disadvantages to that. You can't frame your shot. You can't see yourself. You can't see if someone's behind you making faces or whatever. However, the wide angle lens allows you to capture, it's basically what you see is what you get. And there's also no focus issue because it, it's literally taking a film of what you're seeing. Um, you can't zoom, so that's a limitation. It's not as great in low light, although it's not terrible in low light, but it's not as good in low light as some other cameras. Um, but I still recommend these action style cameras as your first camera. There's two reasons. Um, that is if you don't use your phone. One is all the previous pluses I mentioned. Two, you'll still need this even if you get a, a fancier camera. I still use this to this day. There's one really big reason. It has a waterproof case that's affordable. My other camera you can get a waterproof case for, but it's very expensive, plus the camera's expensive, so I don't want to put my camera in the water just in case. I bought this refurbished three years ago for only $200. Um, I'm a big fan of refurbished. My other camera's refurbished as well. Uh, buying straight from the company that made it. Um, so I bought this from Sony, refurbished. Um, this waterproof case works great. I have completely submerged the camera. It does have a depth limit, so if you're like scuba diving, you need to check into that. But other than that, it definitely works. I have not had a problem. The downside is it dampens the sound tremendously. I used to use it and actually talk. I, lately, I've started using it to film things and then go back and record the voice part later. So, or I just speed it up and put music behind it depending on what I'm filming. Like this past week, I did a time lapse on the beach of people walking down the beach, sped it up, put music behind it so the waterproof case sound wasn't an issue. So that's something to keep in mind. Definitely affects the sound negatively. Um, it makes it very hard to hear your voice but it's still a great option. Say you're at a theme park, it's pouring rain, or and for that matter in New York City, it is pouring rain wherever you are, or if you're at a pool, at the beach, lots of places, water slides, there are some restrictions at places on whether you can take them down slides or not, but 
um, this is great for that. The other option is you can buy an optional add-on. The camera goes inside of here and it gives you the viewfinder. So then, and you can flip it both ways. So when you're looking at yourself or when you're looking at something else, um, this gives you that functionality. This does cost extra, does not come with it, but it is an option. So I feel like these cameras are super versatile and they have a lot of grips, a lot of um, mounts. They've got helmet mounts, they've got all kinds of mounts. So I will probably use this till it dies because there's just a lot of uses for it. The next camera I'm gonna mention is 100% optional. This is not required for vlogging. A lot of people will not need it ever, but they can come in handy when you don't wanna have a camera in your hand, but you wanna capture something. Um, this, these are pivot head. This, is a, this particular model is Durango, um, and they do record in high definition. And the buttons, I don't know if you can see it, but they're right here and right here. And so they're really easy to press. There's a USB connector here, and that's also how you charge it. It doesn't have a separate charger. You just hook it to your computer to charge. And that's also how you transfer the video. There's big disadvantages. You can't change the battery out, so the battery life is very limited. And also, same with the video. Unless you have a portable drive you can offload it to while you're in a theme park or wherever, um, you've got very short you know, recording time. So, but I've never run out because you only use it situationally. You don't use it for the whole day. Um, the sound is not as good on these. It's not bad. It's just not as good as any of the other cameras that we have. But I'll give you an example of when we used it and I'll link to it up above. Um, we recently participated in the grand opening of Invader Roller Coaster at Busch Gardens and we were Vikings. <laughs> And so we walked out and I was able to wear these because they allowed sunglasses. So I was able to film the experience, whereas I'm sure they would not have wanted me holding a phone up because we're supposed to be Vikings or a camera. So that was really neat. I was able to capture our experience and they didn't have any rules against that. They just didn't want us holding things, you know, that made it look like we weren't Vikings. Uh, of course, I don't think they had sunglasses either, but anyway. Um, that was really cool to have that experience captured, and that's the only way I would have been able to capture it. So, not required, but a nice little option, and they're not very expensive. I want to say they're under $200. So, the other thing I want to mention is the grips. I know I showed you one, the foam grip. Still highly recommend it. This is my go-to grip. I use it on both cameras. Um, the camera I'm talking to now, I'm going to cover last, which is the Canon G7X. Um, these gorilla style grips are great as well. I use this again at the beach for the time lapse. You can bend these. So I clamped it around my chair arm at the beach to keep it from falling into the sand and then put the camera, it just has the same tripod screw in there where you just twist it in. But these are very versatile because you can also hold it in your hand. You can grip it something to your car and have it face you. You can use it as a tripod, but that's tricky to get it straight for obvious reasons since it's so bendable. The downside I've had with this is even though it's hard to move this, when I have the, the Sony Action Cam, it works great. When I have the Canon G7 X, since it's a little heavier, since a lot of these things move, sometimes it'll kind of wobble and not stay as steady. So for the G7 X, I almost exclusively use this unless it's stationary. For both of them, this is a wonderful tripod and you're gonna laugh, I got this at the dollar store for a dollar. Um, actually, I think Brian found it. Um, so it expands barely. So like this, this tripod would be legal at Disney World, for example, because if it will collapse and fit in your backpack, they do allow them per the rules. That's in their official rules as of right now. Um, so it's, it's a nice little tripod. You don't have the issue with it being so bendable. It's very stiff and straight. So this is a great way, especially say if I'm talking to myself, I can put this on the table and talk to it, for example, and you can also collapse it and put these in and then hold it like a grip so you can use it for multi-purpose it's not as comfortable as this grip but you can definitely use it in that way so 
good good grip and then like I said there's tons and tons of other mounts and grips so this is our main tripod um, it's an Amazon basics I would assume they still have one similar um, I'll try to find a link to that you can change the height twice and you can clamp these down at any point so you can really customize the height this is the shortest setting so I use that dollar store one when I need something even shorter but you can um, make this pretty tall like um, Let's say it's close to my height and I'm just under five feet when it's fully extended. Um, again, the specs should be online for the total height. And it collapses and fits in this bag, which it comes with. And also, it ha came with, I've never used it before, a attachment so that you can use it with a phone. Um, I can't speak to whether that works well because I've never used it with a phone, but it does come with that. What I will say about this one is it is not Disney World compliant. Um, if you're watching this video and you're not going to Disney World and you're going to do a different kind of vlog, that doesn't matter. But for those of you, since we do Disney vlogging, I just want to mention that this does not meet the requirements of fitting in a backpack. It's too big for a backpack. Last but not least, by any means, is my more recent acquisition. I actually got this at the end of last summer. Um, they had come out with the Canon G7X Mark II, and so they had a deep discount on the Canon G7X refurbished on the Canon site. I was able to get this for around a little over $400. They now go for, I'd say between seven and 800 maybe more, because I haven't priced them out recently. Um, however, this is definitely one of the better... Um, investments that I've made. I would not start with something like this unless you want it for the camera functionality as well because it takes amazing photographs, especially for someone who's not real into photography. Um, it's sort of, I wouldn't call it foolproof, but it's close. It's, it's really easy to use as far as taking photographs. So if you want a nice photo camera anyway, then maybe it'd be worth it. But if you're just starting vlogging, I would start with something less expensive because like I said, you're going to need an action camera anyway. So I want to talk about a couple of modifications, if you want to call it that, that I've made. I have added a muff, and I'll show you the other piece momentarily, but there's basically a little piece of fur that will go here, and this is where the mics are. And during windy conditions, this is fantastic. It's called a micro muff. I'll put a link below. The last time I ordered it, you had to get it from Europe, but you could get it from Amazon UK. And so you have to pay a lot of shipping, but it's well worth it. Um, I will say it has come unglued a couple of times, the muff part. I'll, again, I'll show it to you in a couple minutes. And so I've had to glue that part back together. So I'm not saying it's perfect, but it works really well. Um, the thing I love about the G7X is I put it on this movie mode right here, and I forget about it. Um, you can change every setting you can think of, but I don't. Um, I have found this works extremely well. I'm not saying I couldn't do a better job changing settings. I'm sure I could, but you know, when you're on vacation, you want to be having fun too, not stressing about all the different settings on your camera. So I, I really love that about it. Also, it has this LCD screen that flips up so that you can film yourself and then you can put it back down. And then here's the other modification I made. And my understanding from talking to owners of the G7X Mark II is they fixed this issue. This makes a really loud snapping sound that you can actually hear on the video, on the film, when you put it down. And so I added, these are just those furniture felt self-adhesive pieces. I cut them down small and put them on here and it stops that snap sound um, almost completely. So. That is a suggestion if you're able to find a refurbished G7X, not the Mark II. If you get the Mark II, I don't know that you will need that. And then as I mentioned, it has the same tripod um, you know, input there. You can use this for tripods, but you can also use it for all the handheld grips that I just mentioned, which again, when you're filming both yourself and flipping it back and forth, really helps because also if you touch the screen, you can change a setting. It has this small place here to grip it, or you can hold it under here and you won't change anything. But if you accidentally tap the screen, or if you tap one of these buttons, you can change something. So that's another reason I really recommend using a grip. So back to the muff. I had to go get it. I forgot to get it out. So here's what it looks like. 
and it just goes right there. And it covers the mic but still lets the sound through. It just keeps wind and that kind of noise out and really works incredibly well. When I said I had to re-glue it, it was right there at that seam. The fur had come unglued from the Velcro and so I just used some crafting glue and glued it back together and it's held ever since. Um, since it is from Europe, uh, I'm sure it's humid in places in Europe, but I'm wondering if the Florida humidity is just a whole other level and that's why it you know, sort of disintegrated the glue because I read all the reviews and I didn't see other people complain about that. It could be also that I just had a defective one, but it was pretty easy to fix. And despite the issue, I would still recommend it. It just works so well and it fits perfect because you don't want it covering these holes. So it's, it's perfect. Another big advantage of the Canon G7X um, over the action cam um, it has, in my opinion, equally good stabilization, but it also has good low light capabilities. And if you're willing to change some of the settings, you can get even better low light filming. Like I said, I do not change mine. So everything you've seen of my vlogs, I have not changed any of the nighttime settings, but you certainly can, or for dark rides, that kind of thing. And one of the other huge advantages over the action cameras is the ability to zoom. Um, it's great for stage shows, it's great for parades, um, it's great for a lot of things. There's just a lot of times when you want the ability to zoom. Say you can't get a great spot for any of those things I just mentioned, zoom basically fixes that for your film. Now obviously you can zoom too far and the stabilization degrades greatly the more you zoom. So there's pros and cons, but the flexibility to be able to zoom is huge. And then the overall video and sound quality, I think, is superior on the Canon GX7, I mean, just G7X. Um, I will say there are far more advanced cameras. For bigger cameras, um, you'll see vloggers with all different kinds of cameras, and there isn't a right or wrong answer. It's what your personal preference is, what your budget allows for. Um, pick what's right for you. Go to stores, try a bunch of different cameras. Um, bring a memory card with you, by, by the way. A lot of stores do not have memory cards and the cameras actually don't work unless they have a memory card in them. So bring a micro SD card and a regular SD card with you when you go to uh, look at cameras. But I researched this Canon G7X extensively before I bought it because for me a several hundred dollar camera is a big investment. So do the same thing. Don't just take my word that this is the best camera. I will say a lot of vloggers do use it. I think it's a popular model. I think the Flipping LCD screen is huge um, so that you can see in both directions. But um, like I said, you can get this, the one limitation of it is it does not have an external mic port. The sound is pretty good, but having an external mic port would be a huge plus that it does not have. So I've seen people with much bigger cameras that also have a giant sort of boom mic attached to it. You can't do that with the G7X. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, especially if you're going to be doing something like interviews where you really want great sound quality. For audio, I have a brand new toy. I've angled the camera down so that you can see it without me touching it. Um, this is the um, Zoom H1 handheld portable recorder. Um, I'm going to say a couple things about this. First of all, it's brand new, so I don't have a ton of experience with it. I bought it for two reasons. One, when Brian and I are sitting here recording in our dining room, it's going to dampen the amount of um, echo and other incidental noises. Um, the second reason is when we're in a noisy place like a restaurant, it has a lot of uh, noise canceling effects. And as I mentioned, the um, Canon G7X does not have an audio in, so you can't add a mic um, to it. So um, this basically has two mics up here and it has a ton of settings that I'm not going to cover because there's a lot of YouTube videos that go into great detail for that. Um, but I am going to show you a test now. So I've been recording so far without this audio on. Starting right now, I'm recording with this audio um, from the Zoom H1 just so you could hear the difference. Um, the further the G7X gets from us, of course, the worse the sound is. 
So this gives us a way, because normally when we do our videos, you only see us from about here up because I have the camera angled up more to get Brian's head since he's taller. So this won't even show in the video, but will give us much better sound. Um, I would not recommend this if you're brand new to vlogging, but if you've been vlogging for a while and you know that you would like to improve your audio in certain situations, this might be something to consider. This is just under $100 but it does have an accessory kit that I wouldn't say is mandatory, but that you probably want to get that's another $30 that includes like the AC adapter, a muff to put over this to use it like a handheld microphone, a few other nice things. So to me, it's really about $130 because I, I would say the accessory kit's almost not quite mandatory, but close. I'm now back to the sound on the Canon G7X because I'm holding it closer to me. And I wanted to show you um, a little bit closer up what this looks like. So here is um, the screen that gives you information. There are many, many, many settings. Um, it has some noise canceling settings. You can set the input level. You can set whether you're recording a WAV file or MP3. You can set the level that you're recording at um, and the ratio. So there's, there's so many settings and there are lots of YouTube videos on which ones to use and why. And then the two mics you can see here at the top. What I love about this is if, say we're sitting in a restaurant across from each other, I can set it up like this, and one mic will be towards me and one will be towards Brian. Or if we're sitting here and we're both next to each other, say I'm here and he's there, the mics are aimed in that direction also, so I really think it's going to be good for our purposes. So I think that's about it equipment wise. I honestly will say I think equipment is the least important part of vlogging. As long as you can hear the people talking, see what's happening within reason, you know, so you don't want something that's so dark you can't tell what's going on, but as long as you can see what's happening, hear the people talking, what you're filming is far more important than what your equipment is. Um, I would rather watch an engaging, you know, charismatic, entertaining person, and I'm not saying I'm any of those things, I'm just saying that that's what I like to watch, that's doing something I'm interested in. Um, far more than I care about the actual video quality. Like I said, as long as it's not too shaky, too dark, like the things to where it's just not really watchable. So that's why I say I think it's good to start with a smartphone if you have a decent smartphone and get a feel for it there. The other thing I haven't mentioned is video editing software. I recommend starting out with something free. I started out with Windows Movie Maker, which is free um, with Windows. At least it used to be. I assume it still is. And it's very limited, very basic, but it lets you get started without investing additional money. And my understanding is there's a program on the Mac you know, that would be equivalent. I've never had a Mac, so I can't speak to that. Then I upgraded to Adobe um, Premiere Elements. There's a Premiere Pro as well. Um, Elements does everything that I need. Um, I have not had a lot of problems with it. I did have to reinstall it once because something got corrupted. Um, but other than that, um, it's been pretty easy to use, and there's a lot of tutorials both by Adobe as well as by you know people that just use it out there on the web. So um, I'm not saying you should get that when there's tons out there. Again, look for what works best for you and what you think you can pick up. I found it relatively easy to learn. Um, I'm not saying it didn't take any effort, it did. Plus I learn new things about it all the time, new things I can do. So um, that would be my recommendation. Start with something free and then upgrade once you know this is something that you want to stick with. Another question I get is how to grow your channel. Um, I don't feel like I'm the best person to answer the question. Um, I don't think there's any secret to it or formula to it. You'll see tons of videos out there. I think it has more to do with your content, um, probably with your age with the saturation of the topic you're doing. So for example, um, I think younger vloggers tend to get a bigger audience. Um, I think, you know, beautiful vloggers tend to get a better, bigger audience. Um, I think that, um, you know, picking a topic that's already pretty saturated like Disney is gonna grow slower unless you happen to live 
in Florida um, and can go all the time. I think that people like us that do trip vlogs, I think that's pretty saturated. Don't get me wrong, I'm not discouraging anyone from doing that. Um, I just think it, it's gonna grow slow. I'm just trying to set expectations. And you may be one of those people super charismatic and you grow super fast. So please don't take this, this as discouragement. I just think I, in the beginning, I was a little disappointed with how few people were watching and it took really long time for us to pick up. So don't lose hope, don't give up, uh, stick with it. it. For some people it takes time, for some people they you know, grow really quickly. Um, but I think, the, like I said in the beginning, the big thing is do it because you love it. Um, vlog something that you're passionate about, that you wanna share with other people. Um, and then don't worry too much about the rust and you know, it's the build that they will come. They may come, they may not come, but if you're having fun doing it, does it really matter? Um, the other thing I will say though is I would recommend engaging on social media. Not only does it help you grow your YouTube channel, but it also allows you to interact with all kinds of people. Even if they don't watch your videos, you'll meet so many people and you'll have so much fun. You'll make new friends. So that would be my big tip. So I hope this has been helpful and I hope it answers all of your questions. Like I said, I'll put links in the show notes to any equipment I've mentioned that's still available readily online. Um, I will say again, please do your own research, pick what works for you and do what you're passionate about and what you love. Thanks for watching. As always, we appreciate subscribes, likes, shares, and comments. Bye.